Could we see the first gold-backed currency of the 21st century fail before our very eyes? It's a very good possibility that that could happen. We'll discuss it and what could save the Zimbabwean zig as we explore. never hope I have to write the epitaph of the first gold back currency that we've seen since uh, all nations around the world went to a fiat system. There's no nation except for Zimbabwe that backs their currency by gold right now. Even with all the talk of the BRICS nations moving in that, in that direction, we're a long ways off from that occurring. Gold is the ultimate store of value. And Zimbabwe has been pushed to this end because they've had many different currencies being reset. We'll talk a little bit about that later here. But I'm going to be referencing an article from Bloomberg that discusses exactly what's going on here. Zimbabwe raised interest rates and devalued its gold-backed currency by 43% following persistent weakness in the zig amongst gold, a deep skepticism that the nation's latest bid to create a, a viable local unit would succeed. Now, ZIG stands for a Zimbabwe gold, and, and it's uh, tied to their currency, which the currency itself looks like this, but it has a picture of gold bars on the back. I don't have a ZIG note. I would like to get one someday, but uh, the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe lifted the benchmark policy rate uh, to 35% from 20%, it said in a statement Friday. And it's kind of interesting because most of these have been um, uh, lowering interest rates. We saw a half point here in the United States and the European Central Bank, many other central banks have been lowering interest rates, but that's not what Zimbabwe's central bank has been doing. Prices on the, on the website separately showed the ZIG, short for Zimbabwe gold, quoted at 24.4 per dollar from 14 per dollar earlier in the day. The Central Bank's Monetary Policy Committee did not explicitly confirm if it was devaluing the ZIG, but Governor John Musho Yayanhu said it was taking a number of steps to combat inflation, including allowing greater exchange rate flexibility in line with the increased demand for foreign currency in the country. Monthly inflation quickened to 5.8% in September from 1.4% in August. So they got a real problem there. The ZIG, backed by the Southern African nation's gold and hard currency reserves, was introduced in early April to replace the Zimbabwean dollar, which had lost around 80% of its value since the start of the year. The sixth attempt to stand up a local currency since 2009 was immediately met with doubt from Zimbabweans. And that's really what it boils down to. Faith. Faith in the currencies. Even if they're gold-backed. Well, Zimbabweans are skeptical. And they have bitter memories of how previous local currencies had failed. And really it boils down to the people in charge. Do they trust the people in charge? Are, you, are they using gold as a ruse? In other words, those experiments undermined by the central bank printing money to fund government borrowing, uh, stoked hyperinflation and wiped out savings and drove the economy to the U.S. dollar, which remains the main unit of exchange. That's right. Uh, that's just it, folks. There's a larger lesson here. The dollar is not going away anytime soon. People are writing its epitaph, too. It's not going to fail uh, for a long time, even if they continue doing what they're doing now. Uh, you know, it's one of those things, at least for right now, it literally is too big to fail. Uh, and because 58% of all international transactions and reserves account in the dollar. And uh, it's in many of these nations' best interests, or at least even the people of it, that where it's exchanged uh, for it to continue to do well. Uh, by the way, de-dollarization is a very real thing. And I'm not saying that the dollar is losing influence. It is. But it is very small and tiny. And people have to wean themselves off of it. Think of it like a, a drug. And it's, you just can't quit cold turkey, right? And be nice. You're going to have massive withdrawals. People do not want that withdrawal. 
But Zimbabwe is trying to prop up its local currency by backing it with gold. And on the surface, that sounds really good. But even a gold-backed currency can be corrupted. And Zimbabweans feel that could happen or is happening. Uh, Musho Yanyahu promised that the lessons from the past failures had been learned and the monetary authority would not print more zig than were backed by reserves. But analysts cautioned the new currency would battle with Zimbabwe's underlying challenges uh, that are fixed. The nation has lacked access to global capital markets since 1999 after defaulting on its debts. It also still trying to restore its international standing, despite qualms in Western capitals about its human rights record. While the U.S. has lifted sanctions on some state-owned firms, it's applied them to President Emerson Minyangagwa and other top officials. In other words, there's probably still some corruption uh, in Zimbabwe, and some of that is very difficult to uh, to to uh, make the people feel like you are, are doing the right thing in your country. Corruption and trust in government is a uh, is is the two big issues in many of these African nations. Uh, this is why they're third world nations, and that's what causes it: corruption and government overreach and government control. The devaluation obviously is just catching up to what has already happened on the market, said uh, Harare-based economist Ferrari Mutabagamwe. This is ex what is actually required is to remove these restrictions that allow the exchange rate to be marked, uh, market determined, so that players can set whatever rates they think are applicable. Let the free market decide. There you go. Pressures on the zig began to build in August amid rising food import prices due to El Nino-induced drought and as lower commodity prices dented dollar earnings for mineral exports. Of course, gold did not suffer that much during that period of time. Still, the central bank voiced confidence um, in uh, that its actions would yield results. Its other measurable uh, measures include raising reserve requirements on local and foreign currency deposits to 30%, from 15 to 20%, respectively, and capping that amount uh, of foreign currency an, an individual can take out of the country to 2,000 from 10,000. Uh, the MPC is convinced that the above measures will go a long way in addressing the emerging exchange rate risk. The MPC will remain vigilant to any emerging risks to ensure continued macroeconomic stability. Um, so that is uh, what's going on in Zimbabwe. Real concern here. It really does boil down to what kind of faith the people have in uh, their government, their central bank. Uh, it, it certainly is not a problem with gold. Zimbabwe has also minted their own gold coins, and I think in a sense they ought to probably uh, consider uh, doing more of that and uh, allowing the people to actually utilize the gold coins. Uh, you know, currencies can be manipulated, um, and as just has happened, gold coins can't. Yeah, they are in money in and of themselves. You get a gold coin, and this is an example of uh, the first gold one-ounce bullion coin ever produced in the world. 1967 was the first year of issue for one of these. I like to find one. I actually did some search some searches, and uh, the ones that I've been able to find have been pretty pricey to get an original issue, 1967 Krugerrand. But uh, there's something about uh, this coin that's quite special, even though they can be had for very, very little above spot these days. There's a lot of them out there, and they've held their own, the South African Krugerrand, for all of these years as being uh, the staple of uh, what bullion is about. And, uh, and so, therefore, you know, you think about it, and that's a bullion coin, really not meant for circulation. It is meant as a hedge, as a, as, a, as a way to protect yourself against the currency devaluation that's occurring around the world. By the way, it's occurring with the dollar, too. The dollar is a very strong currency compared to others out there. But what we understand about the dollar is that it is certainly losing value. And uh, But uh, the countries around the world... Well, they see a stable uh, inflation rate of 2.5% as something they can bear with compared to the 5%, 5 almost 6% 
that they're dealing with their currency now, which is gold-backed. That something has arrived there, but it really does boil down to faith. And you're talking about other currencies that actually are not only backed by gold, but are gold themselves. You know, one of the things about gold coins is, well, you got to you carry it around. It's kind of heavy. It may be bulky to carry around. Whereas something like this, well, it's gold, uh, but it's a, it's a denominated uh, by its, uh, its uh, actual gold weight is the denomination itself set by an exchange rate. But a lot of people laugh at these gold backs, but I'm telling you, uh, there is something to these that I think could very well lead to fractional uh, uh, monetary exchanges using actual gold. Um, you know, you have silver coins and you can have gold backs um, where these notes themselves, if, if people honor the exchange rate, uh, then uh, and it is it is working in some of the states, especially in Utah, where it all began. Uh, places like Nevada, Florida is going to get some new ones here soon. I think it's a great way to uh, to to actually find other ways to transact other than the dollar. Um, but again, it really does boil down to people's faith in them, and uh, and it's really what it boils down to. Uh, and you know, I I cannot go into a into a car dealership and hand them this as a down payment for a, for a vehicle. They would laugh in my face, even though it's a legitimate gold coin um, or anything else, any kind of silver product out there. This silver coin here, it is a coin here in the United States. Not many people are gonna know what this is. Five dollars. It's it's a nice heavy little coin, but what is it? And even worse, what about this? This is a pure silver bar, almost 10 ounces, 9 ounces and some, but it's not stamped and marked. I poured this myself. There's no markings on it. There's no way to tell that this is a silver unless you actually know that it's silver and have it tested or what have you. Um, and so that's really the thing. We've got, become so ingrained and entrenched in the dollar system that we find ourselves apart. And it's even prominent in third world countries go figure that a fiat currency is now could very well kill a gold back currency who would have thought that would ever happen but this is the world we live in and people hate the dollar but don't sell the dollar short that's for sure there's something to its strength but in the end all fiat currencies die and there's only one two, one metal that's going to stand as the ultimate reserve, and that's gold, but silver as well, I think, will reemerge. And uh, in the end, this is why we stack. We stack gold and silver because they provide the ultimate protection against what any currency will do, no matter how much trust the world has in it, because we know in the end, gold is going to win in the day. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Hope you found this video informative, insightful, and educational. I like to bring you the latest news in the world of precious metals here, so I hope you will consider subscribing to the channel. And I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and...